I've got the output of the microphone preamp connected up to my scope so we can see what's coming out of the circuit. And I'm sure as you can see when I'm speaking the microphone is picking that up and you can see it on the scope. But yep, that's definitely working. Alright guys, boys and girls. I mean made a video, wasn't it? I mean so we made a video, isn't it? It's been what? 5,000 years since the last time I did an electronics video. Yeah, something like that. Now, for those of you who say that I do not use project cases for my electronics projects, well, take a look at this. And this. It's just I don't have a lot of money and these things are expensive. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Anyway, today I'm going to make a balanced microphone preamp. And this is the circuit that I've come up with so far. It isn't complete, but we're getting there. This should be able to take in a signal from a ba balanced signal from a microphone and then amplify it to an unbalanced signal. If that makes sense at all. I'm crap at explaining things, but yeah. So here's the input stage here. This is my own design. Well, I did get some inspiration from other circuits I've seen on the internet, but other than that, this is all my design. So, as you can see, it uses dual rail power supplies. We've got a positive here and a negative here. This is where either the hot or cold end of the signal goes in, and this is where the other end of the signal goes in. And I've had a thought. What if I put an extra resistor here, a potentiometer, and then I can vary the amount of resistance at the collectors of each transistor. And that way I'll be able to null out any common mode noise. I think that's going to work pretty well. Also, I need to find out what resistor I need here. Thing is, if I make this resistor too low, then these transistors are going to be under-biased and the circuit isn't going to work. If I make this resistor too high, we're not going to have enough gain. I just want to point out a little tip here. Um. Always make sure you know what you're ordering. Because I got a bunch of switches here, thinking that these were ordinary toggle switches. It didn't say that these are only momentary switches. I thought these were ordinary latching switches. As you can see, it didn't say on the listing that these were non-latching. So yeah, I'm sure I could find a use for them, but that's just a bit of a thing. Also, I've got these weird USB... no, not USB... Um, XLR jacks that will also accept a um, like 6.3mm jack plug, so... I could plug one of these in... Or I could get one of these and plug that in... If I find the thing... Oh, it's a bit stiff, but yeah. So I'll accept both of those. Alright, well, I think it's about time we built a circuit. And as if by magic, stuff has appeared. So, here is, um... This circuit all built up. And for this resistor here, I've got a 1 kilo ohm ordinary resistor in series with a 1 kilo ohm potentiometer. So I can vary the resistance and find out where the circuit starts working. So I've got the resistance all the way on the lowest at the moment, which is one kilo. Anyway, I'm now going to start doing stuff with this. I'll speak into the microphone while adjusting this and see at what point it starts working. And then I'm going to measure the resistance that I actually have and replace that with a fixed resistor. Alright, so this is connected to the computer. So I'm going to turn the power on, and you'll hear a direct hookup from it, because the computer's going to be recording. It's going to be a bit buzzy because I've got all these open wires all crisscrossing over each other, and big-ass transformer in my power supply, which doesn't really help, but... Yeah, let's turn it on and see if it works. So I'm speaking into it right now, and 
There's nothing coming through onto the computer, that's why I'm hearing the camera sound at the moment. But when this starts working, I'm going to put in the computer sound instead. So I'm going to start adjusting this until we actually get something. Increasing the resistance at that transistor. Yep, something's starting. Oh, there we go. We now have amplification. I'm just going to start turning this up again to the point where it cuts off. There it goes, cutting off. So I'm going to turn this back again to the point where it starts amplifying. Let me just back that up just a little bit till we get really good amplification. Yeah, that seems to be right about there. Maybe be more precise right about there. Just measure these two now. See what resistance we actually have. And that's what I'm going to use. Okay, well according to the thing I need about 1.2 kilohms. The closest I've got is this 1.5, so I'll just put that in instead. It's probably better to go up a little bit anyway. Got a bit of headroom that way. And there we go. Alright, so we know what we want there. I want to make a couple of changes to this. I want to make the um, op-amp stage just a little bit more, like... I want to make the op-amp stage just a little bit more stronger. I think I've got some one, um, 18 kilo ohm resistors, so... I'll change these to 18 kilo ohms. It'll give a little bit more amplification. Also, I want to put another resistor in here, a variable resistor. Just so I can adjust the gain. And the other thing I want to do is I want to add a limiter to this circuit, which can be switched in and out. And this is the circuit that I've come up with. And guess what? It actually works. Oh, yeah, in case you're wondering about this resistor, I just had to try to. Put a few resistors together until I get the required 87k there that I wanted for the gain I needed. So here's the circuit itself. So I've got a 1 kilohertz sine wave going into the input of the circuit and I'm going to turn this up and down and we're going to see what the circuit is doing on the scope. So the blue line is what's going into the circuit and the yellow line is what's coming out of the circuit. And bear in mind that the input signal is a lot smaller than the output signal. As you can see, we've got 50 millivolts um, per division on channel 1 and 500 millivolts per division on channel 2. Now I'm going to start turning the signal up. And as you can see, the output is barely shifting at all. That sounded terrible there. I sounded like someone talking through auto-tune. Yep, you can see the output is staying pretty much the same. So this is on full volume and as you can see it's barely shifted at all. In fact, I'm just going to put my thumb there and turn it back down again. Just to see how much that shifts. And yeah, that's um, Staying pretty stable. Before I build the circuit for real, I tried replacing these transistors with Darlington transistors. I've got some, what they now BC517s. That didn't work. It just wouldn't do anything. So I'm going to try the Selinsky or whatever it is, you know, complementary feedback pair. So when I've got two transistors in this configuration, it's basically like one transistor. In this case, it's acting like an NPN transistor, so you've got your collector here, base here, and emitter here. Um, this resistor I might go without, that's just to speed up the circuit. I think I can get away without that resistor, so I'm going to try it without that. I'm going to try it without that resistor, see if it works. And this is what the input stage is going to be like, so you know, we've got our complementary feedback tra pair transistors, we've got two on this side, two on this side. Uh, yeah. And yeah, they've got two wires going out to the op-amp. So apart from 
this here, it's exactly the same as this. So, I'm going to try that out and see if it works. Well, the wind howls outside. Well, I built up the circuit, and you're never going to guess, it actually works! Um, yeah. I haven't changed any of the resistors or anything like that. I'm still using all the same resistors as I was before. But you might have noticed that there are now two transistors in each side, arranged in that sizzlinky, whatever it is, complementary feedback pair configuration. So I'm really surprised this works. I mean, I haven't done anything to adjust the bias or anything like that. Anyway, there is one thing I do want to try. You've probably guessed already that we are hearing from the circuit right now. I want to try this on single-ended inputs. So to simulate that, I'm just going to short the base of this transistor to ground so that would simulate a single-sided input. Hopefully it's not going to make a lot of crackling noise while I do this, so I'll just put this across this resistor here. Make sure I get the holes lined up. Right, there we go. So we're now on um, single-sided input, so this would be like if I put an unbalanced source into the circuit with one side connected to ground. And yeah, I can see on Audacity already that there is a lot more noise being picked up, because obviously now it's not going to do the common mode noise reduction. I was a little bit worried that it might not be as sensitive like this, but it seems to be just absolutely fine with that. Now I'm going to pull that out. And we're back onto balanced input again. So yeah, I'm actually quite pleased with that. Right then, well, I thought it was about time we decided whether this sounds better with the complementary feedback pair in the input stage or just single transistors. This is with this kind of input stage right now. And now I'm going to switch over to this kind of input stage, which is just going to simply involve taking a couple of transistors out and replacing them with jumper wires, so we can compare how the two sound. Okay, so, I have taken those other two transistors out, so now we only have a two transistors in the input stage, instead of four. So, let's see how this sounds. I really don't know which is going to sound better or if there's going to be any difference whatsoever in the sound quality. So, what I want to do next... <coughs> oh, that was so loud I just made Jason faint. But like I was saying, what I want to do next is I want to put this microphone next to a speaker that's playing back a constant tone at a constant loudness and see just how much gain we get with just the two transistors and then with all four transistors. Okay, so here's the setup. I've got a microphone put close to the speaker here and well that's obviously connected up to my microphone preamp and I've got the output of the microphone preamp connected up to my scope so we can see what's coming out of the circuit. And I'm sure as you can see when I'm speaking, the microphone is picking that up, and you can see it on the scope. But... Yep, that's definitely working. So... I've got a 1 kilohertz tone on the computer here, which is connected up to the amplifier, so... Let's play that, and see what we get on the scope. Okay, so we've got a nice sine wave there. And we're getting approximately, according to this... Better stop talking. That's about 912 millivolts. Alright, let's stop that before. It makes everybody's ears bleed. And now let's repeat that test, but with the compound feedback pair transistor. But with the complementary feedback pair. Okay, a couple of minutes later, the other two transistors are now in. And the circuit appears to be working as before. So, Going to play that 1 kilohertz test tone again, and let's see what we get this time. Well, I don't know about you. 
but I'd say that's just a hair more amplification than we, than we were getting last time. Just under one volt. So yeah, um, I think I'll go with the um, four transistor input stage. Okay, so this is the project box I'm going to use. As you can see, it's got a nice sloped front. And I, I think I'm going to put even the input jack and all the controls on here. So, microphone input jack is going to go here, and uh, might have the gain control there. I have another control to sit, um, switch the limiter in and out. And also, I'm going to get a couple of LED volume um, level meters. One of them is going to measure the output from the microphone preamp. The other one's going to measure the output from the limiter. But yeah, uh, that's all something I've got to do later. I'm still waiting for those LED level meters to arrive. It's probably going to take a while because they're coming all the way from China. It's the only place I could find them. But yeah, I guess that's it for now. So, until next time, goodbye.